activity here as well. This helicopter's been doing laps all day. I'm not sure what he's doing, but even though we've got a drone, I would like to get in that thing. Good morning! It is the day after the Geneva Motor Show. I've got to tell you, the last three days have been absolutely exhausting. The nature of motor shows is non-stop, relentless, flat-out filming action. It's been amazing, but today, and if you watched yesterday's video, you'll know that I was invited by Maserati to come and drive the Levante. And not any Levante, the 430 horsepower V6, no less, which up until recently hasn't been available in the UK. So I literally haven't been able to get my hands on one at all, and I'm fascinated by it because the engine I have heard wonderful things about. If you're familiar with Maserati, you'll know that they sound fantastic, and this one is no exception. I heard it pull up earlier. Looks beautiful, sounds wonderful. So as I'm sure you can tell, I am stood by a pretty busy, loud roadside. So I think without further ado, we should jump in this car and make our way to the Alps for some snow time. Let's hit it. you're running away, I've been calling for days for you. To think of a way not to call it a break. ski resort called Cormayeur in Italy and we're staying at the Royal Golf Grand Hotel. Very excited to be here. Check this view out. This is the view from my room. Behold the fabulous Italian Alps and this is going to be my playground for the next few days. Check this out down there. There's an outdoor pool. I'm going to hazard a guess and say that that's probably heated. <laughs> anyway, format of this event, we're going ice driving. They have their full range of cars here. Uh, I'm particularly, however, interested in the Levante. Anyway, we're in this beautiful resort. I'm inside my room. Let's go and explore the area and drive some cars. joining Maserati for a very special day at the Royal Driving Experience, no less. Look at this beautiful lodge that we have as our base for the day. And it's a winter tour. We're gonna to go ice driving and we're doing it in this gorgeous environment with 360 degree views of the incredible Italian Alps. This chalet that Maserati have got here is so cool. And behind us, up on this balcony, you can see the full view of this ice track. For this time of the year, it's like absurdly warm. I mean, we're in the sort of plus five right now. As a result, there's patches of this ice track, which are now lake track. <laughs> However, all of the Maseratis we're driving today are fitted with their four wheel drive system. Uh, and it's plowing through this stuff. But I tell you what, you can smash through it in these cars. When you approach it driving, I never imagined that I would see a Maserati so, sort of halfway up the door line with water. It's really cool though. All right. Hey, Hi, how you doing? Fine. Good to see you again. Ready? In the Levante. This is cool. So this is the first time we've been taking this car off-road. All right, let's go and see how we do. Of course, in this, mo in this mod, uh, so the four-wheel driving uh -huh. system, Maserati working always for always. For yeah, the your cool. the best set drive. That's a smooth ride though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so here we are, we're in some deep slush now. <coughs> that was pretty impressive, actually. We were on full lock, uh, really tight lock. Uh, in some deep slush and I don't even know if the traction control even came on then, it just pulled out. I, but I think you need uh, only the, a little bit of confidence. Sure, right? 
because for my personal opinion, you have a good feel on the steering uh -huh. and then uh, you are ready. Kidding, really, man, that's we, it, yeah. we try <laughs> we try without the sideways. traction control. Yeah. <laughs> Everything off. Let's Everything do it, man. off. Let's do it. <laughs> you need only. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 very, very quickly on the control steer yeah. when the rear wheels start to fly. <laughs> development of the Levante, Maserati had 34 test cars that racked up a total of 2.7 million kilometers of development time. I mean, that's no small feat, is it? So needless to say, this isn't a platform that was just thrown together. Uh, the car was in development for a long time, and as a result, you can really tell it's, as they say back in England, a proper piece of kit. So here we are. <laughs> Hear it. That's that. Straight off. That's how an SUV should sound. And that's why I'm genuinely interested in it. <laughs> Let's just put this into manual. Whoa. I will start talking shortly. I'm still enjoying the characteristics of this engine note. What a lovely thing. So, before I digress too much, welcome to the delightful interior of the Maserati Levante. Now, this is all new for me, and when I say all new, I have never driven a Maserati, ever. And so, I'm not sure if this is the right car for my induction. However, I am currently really interested in where the SUV market is heading. If you follow the car world, I'm sure you'll know that it is exploding. The amount of variations of SUVs which are hitting the market right now and are proposed to hit the market in future is crazy. Uh, and it just so happens that I'm currently contemplating uh, an SUV myself. Let's start with the engine. Three litre, twin turbo, V6, with 430 horsepower, no less. And while those figures are cool, the coolest thing by far is the fact that it was developed in conjunction with Ferrari. So as a result, you get things like this. <laughs> oh, I love that. Now, I've approached this car with very little expectation because I genuinely didn't know what to expect. It's not that I've had um, you know, any experiences with Maseratis previously, uh, but I do know two things. First of all, it's an Italian car brand, which without exception are full of character and emotion. And the Maseratis that I've always heard from the outside always sound brilliant. Now, this car is very well insulated. So as good as it does sound on the inside, it sounds even more awesome on the outside. This is turbocharged engines which is actually a relatively small engine that actually they've managed to sound really good now if you're familiar with this channel you'll know that I sometimes class myself as somewhat of a gearbox snob but I have to admit that here we go just a second we've got a semi tunnel coming up here brakes are really good. Let me just pull these windows back up so we don't get too much noise distortion on the microphone. Oh, I'm loving this thing. And just as I 
taking these corners and before I go back to talking about gearboxes, one thing that I am surprised at and that I guess the, the only expectation that I did have was I didn't expect the steering feel to be that good. It's actually quite meaty and gives you more feedback than I ever would have imagined. Anyway, on to that shortly when we get back onto some flowing roads. But yes, transmission, uh, it is the engine, which I think we've established fairly early on, is mated to the a more conventional automatic. It is an eight-speed ZF, and ZF gearboxes for me uh, are some of, if not the best gearboxes in the game. So straight away, the platform, on paper at least, has all the signs of a very promising car. And as I mentioned, I can get a bit snobby about gearboxes, twin clutches in the automatic world being my favorite. This Auto ZF, it's an eight speed with the eighth gear being more of a sort of final drive gear for efficiency. But as you play it up and down this box, very responsive. You're not there pulling this paddle going, when's it gonna shift like sloppy autos of old. This thing is now well and truly part of the modern generation of crisper autos and it is a delight. Don't get, don't get me wrong, it doesn't slam it home like a twin clutch, but it still gives you a crisp enough response and dare I say it crisper than I was expecting uh, in a car like this. Now, Maserati, historically, uh, they have been a brand of racing cars, a brand for racing drivers and a car for car enthusiasts and drivers as a whole. And so despite the fact that this car is obviously a more practical platform, it does have you know, four seats or actually five seats and a boot massive enough to fit in all of the luggage that I have been road tripping with lately, ultimately it does share the historic ethos of driver engagement and as a result this has a 50-50 weight distribution, meaning that this thing is very well balanced. And so when I'm threading it down these roads, all of these elements, the steering feel, the decent gearbox, the lovely engine, the torque from those twin turbos, and this lovely balance has actually made it just a beautiful car to be in. Now, those things on paper, there are other cars, other brands and platforms which share a similar ethos out there, but we are in a Maserati. And the thing about that is that upon stepping inside it, it has such a unique character. And do you know what? This brand for me is almost like a sort of couture high-end fashion brand. There's something about the styling of it and the fact that it is Italian. So it just has this inherent passion infused in every stitch. There's something about it that just adds to that adds to the specialness upon stepping inside the car. Now, why I'm interested in it is that in this world, as mentioned, of just almost too many SUVs, too many four by fours, a lot of them are starting to fit this generic mold. But it's the aesthetics and the passion for style and theatre that the Italians have, and particularly Maserati has, that I think has drawn me into it because even though this fits the daily driver tick box very well it is infused with a bit more thought and attention to detail than the more mass-produced stuff out there aesthetically I think from the front it has a signature style I love those sort of glinty tight squinting daytime running lights I think the area of the car which is my least favorite is actually the rear it's not that inspiring but the rest of it makes up for it in droves now something that i find uh, gives context to a brand and their mindset as to where they sit in the world and the message that they want to convey to potential customers is the other brands that they partner with you know lots of manufacturers will partner with fashion brands to have their clothing made and watch brands. The partners of Maserati are Amenagildo, Zegna and Bulgari. Now both of those brands are you know timeless classy Italian established brands and I think when I walked on their stand at Geneva and I saw their partnerships and I was like of course of course Maserati would be rocking out with brands like that. I mean, Bulgari, steeped in Italian tradition of making like artisan, fine crafted jewelry. You might dismiss or 
passively consume partnerships with with car brands but actually it does paint a really nice picture and it's it's something that i wouldn't normally talk about but i think in the case of maserati it's such an interesting alignment that, that says a lot more than you might think at first anyway that was my first drive of any maserati ever and my first drive in the levante sun is setting let's get back to the hotel before i can't show you anymore go back outside now into the cold onto this the wonderful stand and call it a day as always guys thanks for watching i shall see you next time Ciao!